Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. If you are ever anticipating company at your home and your household is like mine, there's lots of preparations to be made. There's, of course, the usual cleaning and picking up and hiding away in closets, the things you don't want guests to see. There is the guest towels to be laid out and bathrooms to be cleaned before the guests arrive. There's food to be purchased and errands to be run. The lawn needs to get mowed and the patio needs to be swept. All this done to be good hosts. Uh, that is to show hospitality to welcome guests. And after they do arrive, well, the work has only just begun. There are meals to be prepared, extra chairs to be set out, snacks to be served while they wait. And if you want to be the hostess with the mostess, then there will be no sitting around visiting with the guests if you want to get supper ready on time. Hospitality is a good thing, but it takes a lot of work. Well, that seems to be what's going on in our gospel story from Luke for this morning. It begins with Jesus and his disciples on their way to Jerusalem and are pausing just outside of town in the village of Bethany, which is just over the hill from Jerusalem, where Martha has welcomed Jesus and his disciples into her home. Now, this generous act of hospitality is probably not completely spontaneous. She probably had an inkling that Jesus would be stopping by, but still it requires lots of work on Martha's part. Well, it just so happens that her sister Mary is there as well. But apparently she was no help at all, as she merely sat at Jesus' feet. Okay, maybe that's not quite right. She's not merely sitting at Jesus' feet, but attended to be listening to Jesus would be a better description of what her actions are. This, however, was not what Martha wanted her sister to be doing. She obviously believes that Mary should be with her, helping in the preparations and not sitting around while listening with all the men at Jesus' feet. Well, hosting all these guests requires more than just one woman's efforts, which is not an unreasonable expectation, except for today. It's at this point in the story where things take a decidedly uncomfortable turn for most people. When Martha comes seeking Mary's help, she doesn't talk directly to her, but instead she goes and talks to Jesus. She wants to shame her sister into coming and helping her by asking a question of the master, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? But she's surprised by Jesus' response. Jesus, instead of telling Mary to get into the kitchen as Martha wants, Jesus speaks to Martha instead. He says her name twice, not as a way of showing annoyance, not like Marsha, Marsha, Marsha kind of thing, but more like a term of affection. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. Don't you just hate that when Jesus does it? Don't you just hate that when Jesus turns everything upside down and, and he sides with the wrong person in the story? I mean, it's awful. He, he, he sides with Mary. Now, why do I say that that's the wrong person? Because I think that's how many people feel about a story like this. Because there's a lot of Martha supporters out there, people who see themselves in Martha. The fact of the matter is the church fellowship functions would usually fall flat on their face without a few Marthas in the group. And as I, in preparation for this sermon, I can't tell you the number of journal articles and commentaries where they talked at nauseam about poor Martha being mistreated by Jesus. And then I listened on a, to a, a, a blog where there were three seminary professors from Luther Seminary, not the one I attended, thank you very much, who spoke at length about Martha, and then they never got around to saying why Jesus said that Mary had chosen the better part. 
Like I said, there's a lot of Martha supporters out there. Jesus said that Martha was worried and distracted by many things. Well, aren't we all, at one time or another, distracted and worried by many things? And some of those things that we worry and are distracted by are good things, aren't they? Important things like our, our families, our children, our parents, keeping up with all those activities and events and practices, or, or checking in with elderly parents, making sure they're okay. All that takes a lot of time and takes a lot of energy. Making a living, our jobs, money, these are not unimportant things either. We all need them. We, they are necessary, and they're not necessarily bad things to worry about or be distracted by. They are a reality of life. Or our community, community involvement, participating in all the things that go on to make our community a, a richer, better place. Maybe it's the arts, maybe it's the park district, whatever it is. It takes time and energy and worry and concern. Those aren't bad things, they're really quite good. But that's not what Jesus is getting on about this morning. He's not saying that Mary's efforts at showing hospitality, her worries and distractions are not good. He's not trying to pit one sister against the other. He is, however, saying that Mary has chosen the better part. But it's hard for us to understand why that might be. Isn't it better to be a doer like Martha rather than just a listener like Mary. Our society, 21st century world and the first century, we praise those people who get things done, who make things happen, who show up and participate in the program, the effort, the campaign, whatever it may be. Even in the church, we like doers and servers and carers. How else would all those committees and ministries and Edu education programs keep going and oh yes we love all the Marthas in the church so it's hard for us to understand why Jesus thinks Mary has chosen the better part well let's think about it for a moment think about the world that Jesus and Mary and Martha lived in women held very traditional restricted roles in their communities and in their families. They, of course, were the ones who prepared all the food, raised the children, acted as the hostess when there were visiting guests. And Martha played that traditional role perfectly. It was, however, very unusual, perhaps even a bit scandalous, for a woman to sit and learn at the feet of a respected teacher or rabbi, especially one as famous as Jesus. And yet here was Mary doing that very unusual, scandalous thing. It's really quite a radical notion for a woman to take on the role of one of the disciples, because that is indeed what she, Mary was doing. She was sitting at the feet of Jesus, which is the place where a disciple would be, learning from him, listening to his words. Perhaps, perhaps that's what got Martha so steamed up. It wasn't the fact that her sister wasn't helping her with the meal preparation, but that her sister got to do something which she wished she had the courage to do. Maybe she wanted to sit at the master's feet too, but someone had to make supper, didn't they? What was that Jesus said about the better part? Well, throughout Jesus' mission and ministry, it was all about breaking down walls and barriers and destroying all the roles and stereotypes of society and culture and religion. And having women disciples, though radical to the rest of the world at that time, seems like just the sort of thing Jesus would do, doesn't it? Later on, when you look at the letters of the Apostle Paul, 
you can see evidence that the early Christian communities often had women leaders, women disciples, building up the body of Christ in their own communities. And Paul commends their leadership and their strong faith and their commitment. But not long after Paul had disappeared from the scene, society's pressures on the church pushed women back into the kitchen and behind the curtains and away from the master's feet. However, even though formal recognition of women disciples was taken away, that debt did not stop many women from still being disciples. They were disciples in their own way, exerting their influence on the mission and ministry of their own congregations and the larger church for centuries. Influence on their churches and the global church through mission societies and abolitionist movements and temperance societies and countless women's groups who have uh, gathered clothing, gathered food, who have made quilts and health kits and supported educational programs and all kinds of ministries. And now we have come full circle where women can choose to serve Jesus as disciple leaders, as pastors, as bishops, as women congregational presidents, or even as disciple servants, still choosing to be quilters and cooks and committee chairs and banquet planners and servers and all kinds of things. But it always begins for all of us at the feet of Jesus, where there is room for Marys and Marthas and Williams and Henrys and all who are called to serve in Jesus' name, and it can never be taken away from us. There is a better part to be chosen here, chosen by those who wish to follow Jesus. And so this isn't a story about sitting over service, because if you want to serve Jesus, and you want to serve your neighbor for the long haul, It always begins by listening and learning and being fed and empowered by Christ. If you want to preach and teach, or if you want to feed and serve each and every one of us, always must begin by sitting at the feet of Jesus. Amen.